I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're exploring a unique way to soothe the soul with Doris Lance. She's written a powerful book. It is called Botanical Reflections, Capture Your Days in Words and Pictures. This book combines daily questions, inspiring quotes, and the beauty of botanical art to help manage anxiety and support emotional well-being. Join us right now as we discover how creativity can be a serene escape from life's everyday stresses. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her delightful book. The links are below this interview. Doris, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Well, greetings and good morning. Good morning. Such a great idea for a book. What was your inspiration to combine botanical art with journaling to enhance the reflective experience for readers? Well, since an early age, I've been out in nature. I think six years old, I was exploring the mountains in Western North Carolina, where I grew up. And uh, I felt very comfortable and very at home. And as I continued to just find nature was, when you use your senses and you see all the beauty, and then you smell, say, the lilacs blooming, and, and you can feel the ground underneath your feet. I just was encaptured and wanted to continue. And so... As I got older, I got a degree from Western Carolina University and just continued to explore the world. Yeah, wonderful. Well, we're glad you did because you give us a little glimpse of that world in your book. Give the folks at home an overview of what Botanical Reflections is about. I would call it uh, a nature journal. It is getting getting a sense of answering a question like one of the questions is what would you like to do that you haven't done mm -hmm. and how could, would you start going about it and then i have a quote um like dawson trotman says uh emotions disentangle themselves when they're captured in words and pictures mm -hmm. and then i have a sketch because in all my hiking and backpacking, in my backpack, I had a sketchbook and a pencil. And I started a below sea level in Death Valley and sketched the desert five spots up until, I guess, about 10,000 feet in Patagonia, Chile. Amazing. Amazing. Tell us a little bit about the artwork in your book. I wanted to give an interpretation. I didn't want it to be a realistic sketch per se. I wanted it to be an interpretation and give the reader an opportunity to kind of express themselves, maybe get rid of some stress and either color or paint these beautiful jewels that I found from all over the world, from mm -hmm. below sea level to 10,000 feet. How do you recommend readers begin their own journey of botanical reflections? I think a good way would, you don't have to start at page one and go through the entire thing. Mm -hmm. I think a good way is just to take the book, which I have the book here, mm -hmm. and flip through the pages. And just see if there's a question. Um, what is the most creative thing you have done so far? And just take a pencil and answer that question and perhaps um, do a little bit of creativity with some oil colors or crayons or pens or whatever. Absolutely. It's great advice. Uh, not only get in touch with nature, but also interpret it, absorb it, and express it through artwork. I think that's great advice. Throughout your book, you also encourage readers to explore their feelings and reduce anxiety. What feedback have you gotten from readers about the impact, uh, the impact rather, of your book on their, on their mental health and emotional well-being? 
Well, I think, Logan, that I expected some positive feedback, but uh, I've gotten superior feedback. Wonderful. Well, because I think it seems like such a simple thing to do. And the feedback I've gotten so far from the readers who have sent me emails has said, I didn't realize that I was so wound up over this one problem. Mm. And when I just kind of took the time to take the book, I think one gal said, I took the book in the backyard because I don't have a park near me. Mm. And I took the book in the backyard and I sat down and all of a sudden I heard birds singing. (laughs) I, I felt the breeze coming, you know, using that five senses. Mm. Um, and she said, I just felt more relaxed. And I thought, wow, <laughs> this is what relaxation should feel like. Exactly. You really do have to take the time to stop and smell the roses. There's so much beauty all around us, no matter where we are. In the small crack between the rocks, you'll find a strong plant growing. Um, you know, it's just really, really amazing. I know you love to hike. Um, you've been exploring the outdoors since you were a little girl, like you said. Um, where where are some of your favorite places to get in touch with nature and explore? Well, that's kind of like asking which of your mm-hmm. children you love the most. But okay. I can tell you, uh, after traveling the world, the one place that I just felt like Uh, I guess the word is Shinrin Yoku. Mm -hmm. The Japanese developed this back in the early 80s of letting your five senses, getting in touch with them being out in nature, Mm -hmm. was Havasu Village. Havasu Pai Tribe. Havasu Pai is in southern, southwestern Arizona. And Supai means people of the blue-green water. Mm -hmm. I experienced at least five waterfalls, 90 foot high, just cascading down. And it was the most beautiful. It wasn't aqua blue. It wasn't cerulean blue. It was this blue I'd never seen before. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing once you get out there, what you can experience. And I think people have to get into a habit of breaking their daily routine overcoming their anxieties of doing something that is adventurous and unknown. Um, And you seem to do it all the time. You told me before we started filming today that you're looking forward to your next hut to hut uh, hiking adventure. That sounds fabulous. It sounds like a lot of work. That's a lot of hiking when you're going from hut to hut. Tell us what an experience like that is about and what it's like. I think it takes planning. I remember when I uh, climbed Mount Fujisan in Mm -hmm. Japan, I knew the elevation was going to be higher and I wanted to train. So I went to the Eastern Sierras and started step by step. I think it was Vince Lombardi that said, life is a cinch by the inch, but by the yard, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So I started at like 3000 feet and then I went up to 5000 feet and went back a week later and just built my strength and stamina up. And one thing you said that really rang a bell with me is um, I have a saying that says trade screen time for nature time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So many of us are wasting hours and upon hours, weeks upon weeks. If you add up the time, we're just scrolling on our phones, looking at nothing um, other than whatever's programmed in there to click in our brains and make us feel good for a second. Um, You got to get beyond that. And also, I love the fact that you trained for uh, Mount Fuji. I actually just saw Mount Fuji about uh, three weeks ago. Um, I, we drove around and we saw it from all the five lakes that surround it, but I was not as bold as you. I did not climb Mount Fuji. So that's great. Um, I didn't even realize people were up there climbing it and scaling that mountain. So that's wonderful. And how long ago was that that you did that? Oh, that three years ago. 
And Amen. the thing about in Japan, they see that as a rite of passage, Logan. Really? Here I am. And you can get your stick uh, pressed. They have a uh, um, hot press that you can get your stick pressed with that every thousand feet. Amazing. And, uh, if you want. But what in Japan, I saw a, like he's 80, 85. And then I saw a little five-year-old just pass me by. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But it shows you that, you know, life's eternal, that age is not a limitation, only if you let it be a limitation. And if you let it become a limitation, it becomes more and more of a limitation every day. So I think you're smart to get out there and push the boundaries, explore and have fun. And we're so happy that you chronicled many of your adventures in this book, Botanical Reflections, capture your days in words and pictures. The book combines daily questions, inspiring quotes, and the beauty of botanical art to help you manage anxiety and support your emotional well-being. And it might just encourage you to put this down, pick up a hiking stick, and go for a walk today. That'd be wonderful. Doris, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Pleasure's all mine. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time, this time until next time, on Spotlight.